Hello, um, this is my second video review on uh, my channel. This is going to be a review of Alfred Hitchcock's 39 Steps uh, from the Criterion Collection. This is a 1935 film. Um, I don't know this fine number. No, nope. library copy pretty much has it sealed up all over the place. Um, but I'll put that in the title. But um, this is going to be a review mostly of the film itself rather, rather than of the uh, actual Criterion Collection set, um, and I say that because I had watched this movie for the first time, this was my first um, experience with the 39 Steps, uh, and I enjoyed the movie, but uh, I, one, haven't had time for to watch all the special features, the commentary, stuff like that, um, and also because I want to buy it and um, enjoy them at my own pace. Uh, I only have this for about six days total, um, I think I have two left, so yeah, I have four more movies over there that I want to get to um, in these next two days, uh, and I can't renew for my library, so I have to eat it. I'm to check them out. It's just a hassle. So, um, uh, but to get into the movie itself, um, this is one of Alfred Hitchcock's uh, British films, uh, kind of his pre-Vertigo. Actually, I don't know if it's Vertigo, pre-Birds, and you know, kind of stuff that Americans think of when they think of. Um, Alfred Hitchcock. It is the the basic premise is a woman um, comes home with the main character uh, what's it, Robert Richard um, Richard Hane or Hane, H A N N A Y uh, and she kind of has this really cliched sort of German accent and uh, informs him that uh, she's she, she's kind of acting strange and informs him that you know she's she's being followed um, with these two men downstairs blah blah blah. Um, and then later, uh, when uh, when he's asleep, she kind of stumbles into the room that he's in and um, uh, has a knife in her back and kind of uh, mutters some, you know, last minute words. And um, she has an, a map of uh, of an area in Scotland in her hand, a clutch in her hand, as well as um, she had given them the information before. Uh, she was murdered that, um, you know, beware of the 39 steps or something uh, of that uh, nature. And also that, you know, be careful of a man that has a, this, this top digit from his left, one of his hands um, missing. Um, and so this character then, uh, I don't remember why he loses his house, but uh, he, oh, because, yeah, those guys are going to come and kill him. Um, but... So he starts running away and uh, eventually realizes he's being accused of the murder in his apartment, and that kind of leads to this whole chase. And there's these suspenseful moments throughout. You know, he um, he meets the notorious blonde uh, woman. Uh, he later becomes hand uh, handcuffed to her. Um, there's these. You know, I don't want to spoil the big plot points because it's um, so that's why I'm speaking really ambiguously. But it's really um, it's a really good sort of journey kind of movie, a really good escape movie, I guess, a really good heist kind of movie. Um, regardless, it's really suspenseful throughout. Uh, surprisingly so for me, for a movie that was released in 1935, I typically don't think that these movies have pacing down pat, uh, but this movie did. Um, I, I wasn't on the edge of my seat by any stretch, but I was definitely kept intrigued. I normally can predict when things are coming um, in these types of movies, but this movie... Uh, surprised me uh, in good ways. Um, for example, there's a scene where he's on a train um, and the, the, the notorious blonde woman, uh, he kind of goes into her um, train cabin and starts kissing her as if he's her, her husband. He's like, you know, please, you need to help me. Um, and then the police kind of run by. And in any other movie, you would expect that the police would come in and she'd be like, no, he's, he's my lover. But in this movie, she's like, I think this is the man you're looking for. Uh, and that kind of stuff the whole time keeps you keeps you on edge because you're expecting one thing and you get another, which is how movies are supposed to treat suspense, which was um, remarkable, uh, remarkably well done. I really, really enjoyed constantly being surprised. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock kind of gave you a, the benefit of the doubt as a filmmaker, which I really enjoyed. Um, uh, I don't really know what else to say about this movie other than the fact I really enjoyed it. There is a fun ending, um, surprise ending maybe. Um, uh, the acting was, was fairly strong. Uh, again, suspense was uh, incredible. The sort of 
middle act in Scotland uh, is, is really, really, really good. Um, when he encounters the man with the, um, the missing digit, that was like uh, one of those kind of big, just like gasp movie moments. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really did enjoy it. I would say it's probably my favorite movie made before um, the 50s, and um, I have Citizen Kane. I've seen Citizen Kane. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know, this really did it for me. Um, again, I haven't watched all the Criterion actors. I did start watching, there's a documentary called Hitchcock, Hitchcock The Early Years from the year 2000. Um, so I think it's about a half an hour long. It's about Hitchcock's uh, British films. Um, and some of his early, early, early movies, like his uh, silent features and um, the bits I watched talked about voyeurism and how Hitchcock was using film as a medium for um, shedding light on how women are kind of treated like pigs or uh, animals um, by, by men, especially at the time. Um, there's a commentary by Film Scholar on here, which I really would like to see when I do eventually purchase this movie, probably during the Criterion.com flash sale that's rumored in September. Um, what else do we have? There's a original footage from a 1966 television interview with Hitchcock. I didn't check that out, so I don't know what that's like. Um, the complete broadcast of the 1937 Lux uh, Radio Theater um, adaptation. Um, I haven't checked that out, but I'm assuming it's it's good. All those Lux uh, productions are pretty cool. Um, Audio excerpts from Francois Truffaut's 1952 interviews with Hitchcock. I'm imagining that would be really interesting. Um, and then a booklet with an essay. The booklet's kind of medium size, it's actually fairly small, but you know, maybe 10, 12 pages in there. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really highly would recommend seeking this movie out. I mean, I saw it at my, I got it at my library. Um, if you have some medium to watch it before you buy, you know, Hulu or Netflix or some DVD rental service, Redbox, something like that. I don't think it would be a Redbox. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out if you can. Uh, if you're looking for a blind buy movie and you are remotely interested in this movie, I would definitely check it out. If you're looking to be surprised and want to, maybe you're like me and you don't like classic Hollywood, but you want, um, you want something that's going to really be a good bang for your buck. I think this is one of the $30 titles, and maybe it's a $40, but you know, either way, if it was on a half-off sale, you'd be paying 15 bucks or 20 bucks. On Amazon, it's probably a couple, you know, maybe 25 uh, or whatever, so I, I, I really like this movie. I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to cut this review short because I've been kind of rambling, but uh, I was hoping to get more in-depth into the film um, than I did. i got to stop spending so much time on plot. Um, yeah, I have four more movies over there, um, Rashomon, uh, Floating Weeds, uh, I can't read them from here, I don't know, but I've got four more, um, that I want to get to, I did watch, uh, I bought and watched The Beals of Grey Gardens during the last, um, The Barnes & Noble sale, so that's the review that I've got incoming while I try to watch one of these movies, um, and then, uh, I got the Fanny Alexander box that I showed you in the last video, as well as this was a video that I uh, checked out from the library, but it was damaged and didn't work very well, and I was really enjoying the plot, um, but I kept skipping over parts, so I ended up buying it. It's called Morris. Um, it's a Merchant Ivory film by James Ivory. It's got uh, Richard or Rupert, Rupert Graves, um, and Hugh Grant. Uh, I was loving it, so I can't wait to finish it up. Um, so you've got the Beale Square Gardens probably coming tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try and watch one of those four movies tonight and get that review lined up uh, to record tomorrow, maybe. But, um, either way, uh, please please keep checking out this channel. I'm hoping this is worthwhile. Please tell me what you think of these reviews, whether they're good or bad, interesting or boring. Um, I ramble too much. I don't say enough about certain things. Just I really want feedback because I enjoy talking about movies, but I don't really know how to talk about a movie by myself to a non-discursive audience. <laughs> I'm usually conversating. Um, so yeah, please, please, please uh, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want to do, but uh, any feedback is encouraged, right? unless you're going to call me names. Um, constructive criticism, maybe. But, uh, but thank you for watching.